Optic neuritis and MS is probably the most famous correlation because people who have optic neuritis are always concerned whether this is the first manifestation of MS. And it's not an easy question to answer um, because if somebody has optic neuritis, you obviously inquire about other symptoms that may indicate they have MS. Sometimes you just follow them um, and see whether any other symptoms pop up that give you a clue it's MS. But there's a, there's a tight correlation between optic neuritis and MS. Optic neuritis and lupus is a, is a well-established association. It just doesn't occur often very frequently. People with lupus can develop optic neuritis, but it's not a common manifestation. And people with optic neuritis can develop lupus, but that too is just not a very common association. So you just follow people for each. Cat scratch optic neuritis mostly occurs in kids. And the only way to properly diagnose it is to look in the eye and dilate the pupil in order to distinguish it from optic neuritis associated with MS or any of the viral infections. It has a pretty specific appearance and it's something you have to keep in mind because there are some infectious disease doctors who treat it with antibiotics and steroids and some that don't. But it is an important thing to identify. Optic neuritis and viral infections are uncommon. Um, any of the viral infections that you can think of, um, mononucleosis, chickenpox, mumps, measles, you can develop what's called a post-infectious optic neuritis. It's mostly in kids, but it's, in my experience, it's very uncommon. Cranial arteritis is usually a disease of people older than 65. Optic neuritis usually occurs in people in their 20s and 30s. Uh, cranial arteritis patients usually don't feel well. They have aches and pains and tenderness of their scalp and their appetite's not good and they lose weight. People with optic neuritis are virtually young and healthy otherwise. So it's an entirely different condition and you go about diagnosing arteritis, cranial arteritis, first by getting a series of blood tests, and if necessary, you biopsy one of the arteries in the scalp. When you experience a symptom that you're not familiar with, or it makes you nervous, or it affects your vision, or any other part of your function, you wanna to try to find out what's causing it so you can get to the bottom of it and treat it as soon as possible. And for that, you have a primary care doctor or a pediatrician who's uh, sort of the first, first attack. And if they need to send you onward, then they will send you onward to somebody who may know a little bit more about your symptoms.